One of the most painful things that many of my followers and maybe you listening to this have gone through is a broken engagement. A broken engagement is much different than a breakup when you're dating or a maybe even a good friend losing them. A broken engagement means that the person you were most intimate with, the person who possibly knows you better than anybody else, who loves you more than anybody else, has decided that they are not ready for a long-term commitment with you. Most of the time when I see clients in this situation, partners who have been left at the altar, I guide them through this and I remind them that even though you may think that or you may tell yourself, well, it might not really be over, a broken engagement is usually final. And it's important that it is final because if you got that far in a relationship and something so badly or something troubling your partner so much had came up, that they could not go through the plans, then it's important that you not only give it value, but that you know this will be a marathon of healing. You won't get over this quickly. It will be anywhere from six months to two years after a broken engagement that you start feeling confident, that you start feeling restored, that you can love again, that you start dating again. And that's not to say anything's wrong with you. That's just how, how long it takes. So I've got some healing steps that are going to help restore your hope if you're the person that your fiance broke up with. So let's start now saying goodbye. It's very important that you're direct and that you say goodbye. Often couples like to hug goodbye Whatever it is, you need to confront it. You cannot do it via text or social media messaging. It's important that you're there in person for that final, that final goodbye. If you live in different places, then I recommend you meet and you actually are physically in the same place so that you can say goodbye to this relationship. Number two, you have to share the news about the broken engagement, and this is painful. It's nice if the couple is so, so um, honest about it that they both agree they're just not ready, that this was maybe not a well thought out plan, and they're able to break the engagement to people together. However, that rarely happens. So sharing the news, it's important that you have your good friends, your family close. So you start out with those closest to you and then you can spread out to the other guests. Sometimes friends and family will say, I'll help, I want to help. I'll tell the relatives. And that takes a big load off your shoulders. You can communicate with the, all those people later, but what initially has to happen is you share those people in your inner circle, those closest to you as honestly as you can, and be upfront, I'm going to need your support now. Number three, unplanning the wedding. This is going back to every venue that you had planned, talking to the vendor, seeing what you can do as far as, you know, refunding, as far as money spent. And all of this is part of the grieving process. Expect to cry during this. Vendors are used to this. You're not the first person this has happened to. It's also important that when you tell your parents, that they align with you, that they understand much better if your fiance wasn't ready for this to continue, that they were up front with it now. I've seen incredible stories where the wedding went on anyway. The fiance did not have the guts to say, you know, I just, I'm not ready for this. In fact, I've heard about fiances on the, on the week before their wedding say to me, I'm just not sure I'm ready. Like I, all our friends are supportive of us, but I see things in my future spouse that I don't think I'm going to be able to live with. This is not a person that you, you would want to end up married to. It obviously is lacking in transparency. And that's a big no-no if you're going to make a long committed life. So I think with unplanning the wedding, it's very important that as you grieve,
leave all of that, you also save some space realizing that this had to happen before the marriage because the worst thing is to be with someone who doesn't love you the way they're going to they're going to need to love you to go the years number 4 facing the wedding day this is a sacred day and i want you to count it as such i want you to plan a trip or do something plan an outing with your family do something to com commemorate that day that day will go down in your story forever and you shouldn't hide it and you shouldn't avoid it you should do something symbolic for you for some people who are very faithful they wanted to go to church that day just to be in a church that's where their wedding was going to be others decide they're going to take a trip out of the country away from everything so they can grieve it in their own privacy there is no right or wrong way to do this it is important that you do it though number five find a counselor a counselor is going to help you give that that clarity they're going to help restore your self-esteem your confidence which you're going to need and they're going to help you find hope I think the hopelessness and the situation being rejected at that level is the hardest thing. It's like a kick in the gut and it's important that you have a therapist who's kind of watching your trajectory, seeing where you might fall into trouble, where you won't, because otherwise it's very easy to get stuck or trapped in the past, and that's not where you belong. Next, reclaiming your special places. I think going back to those places that you used to go with your fiance is very important. That place does not belong to you and your fiance it belongs to you this the broken engagement is not defining you it's a part of what happened in your life it's part of your story brave that take that that's going to make you a stronger person but by all means don't avoid or become fearful of going back to your old haunts those places were symbolic to you they can be symbolic to you without the, the fiance. The most important thing is you don't let it spook you. You don't let these places drive you away with bad memories. The sooner you confront them, the sooner you grieve them, the better you're going to do. And lastly, I think it's really important to surrender. To surrender to the way life is. Surrender to the unknowns. You cannot make someone love you. And you can't control somebody else. If your fiancé broke the engagement, whatever was going on in them was not okay. It was not able to be a good committed partner, to be a good husband or a good wife, to be there during the bad times. Maybe this was a person that liked the good times, but they really had no stamina for the rough times. And every marriage is going to have rough times. There will be times you look in the mirror and you go, I don't know if I can do it. You can do it. You thought you had a sure thing. You thought you had the best thing. But guess what? Life showed you another side. Take that other side. Grieve the, uh, grieve the past. Grieve the hurt. But know that like all of life, you are part of this creation. And love will happen to you again. You will be married again if that is the intention that you put forward with your actions and with your words and with what you really want. There's not just one person for everybody. There's many people that you can align with, that you can accept and work with and have a super committed relationship. If this video is helpful to you, please subscribe. And to all my subscribers already, I thank you guys. It means a lot to me.